In this video, I will show a couple of new tools I made for Houdini, and this time it has to do all about the all about the PDG inside Houdini and how can we make our life a little bit easier when working with PDG. So this is pretty simple setup. I'm not going to go through with it, but it's basically just fetch geometry and textures and composites them together into the output pictures of the uh, mantra node. And then we overlay them with the loads of this geometry. So basically we have uh, only four different geometry, but for this, uh, but for every one of these are actually five LODs, I think. This is just from the Megascan. So one thing that you will, to show the, showcase the tool, one thing that you will do a lot inside a PDG, you'll reference the work item attributes like these. And I made a tool that's going to fetch basically all of the active work item attributes and we can paste them inside something like for the output pictures. So for my for here I have an output text overlay and I and I am outputting these pictures to the uh, key which is the unique geometry name for my basically for each geometry. This is just a name that uh, Megascan gives for this geometry. And this is my unique name that's going to be a folder that's going to hold all of the LOD pictures. And then I do it again and then I uh, do it again. I pass the key and then the LOD of it. And for us to get it easy, we can just so this is the correct way and I'm going to show how can how can you get them easily without writing down every one of these uh, attributes. So go ahead to the node that you want to uh, paste them. Let's see out of pictures. Go to the palm utils and there's two options. Get PDG attribute. You can replace the, replace the entire string or you can append to it. So let's see we have uh, this, we want to append to it. And this is all that all the attributes. There's lots of uh, Houdini already added attributes, but you can see there's also the key and the LOD. So just, and what's cool about this, you can actually select them both, multi-select and press accept. You can see it's basically added to them. And the only thing that we have to do is uh, a little bit rearrange them. So I'm going to copy this, fix this side here, and then copy this. And then P and G. And basically we have the same setup as inside here. And we can and we can uh, and we can uh, cook this already. And once you have cooked it, it's going to look something like this. So we have our uh, LOD overlays, uh, our attribute, which is these folders. And for every one of these folders, we have a every picture of LOD so with overlay you can see how our food is getting even more and more low poly so that's that for getting out uh, attributes PDG attributes easily another thing that you might want to do inside PDG is sign material uh, uh, material textures automatically like this that will take a screenshot so what so how could we get this a little bit easier so inside here we have a rop fetch mantra and by this node when it's this node starts to work we want to make sure that all of our textures are set up let's take a look at one of these work items and you can see there's going to be an input and output so basically this this node takes an input of the texture files and geometry and outputs image of the screenshot that we take so what I want to do is reference all of these input files inside our uh, principal shader or whatever you're using uh, that's going to point to these textures. So let's go ahead to my setup for this geometry. We are basically assigning, uh, geom uh, assigning material and that's it. So inside this principal shader, we have uh, basically a couple of, uh, couple of functions that points to these uh, input tags. So let's do it again. 
I'm going to just use the principal shader again. If it, that's not set up, I'm going to just copy it and point it to this. Now we have nothing. And what's cool about this, it's very easy uh, uh, to use. So base color could be white. So for the texture, texture, go ahead under this. To, and if for the current uh, active work item, you can see it's right here. If there is an input and an output, you can reference them. So let's put it, we want to reference input tag. You can see these are all the tags of the geometry, all of the geometry tag and the texture tags. And so this is the albedo. Let's so for the roughness. Let's point to, to the roughness. For the normals, label normals. And for the displacement, uh, texture displacement. Tag displacement. So that's that. We have added it. And you can see we are now pointing to the principal shape too that we just set up. And it's going to automatically test set textures of it. So that's very nice. And the last tool for this update will be adding parameters to the wedge node. So let me go to the new top network and put down the wedge node. And we first of all for us to add, add parameters to this wedge node, we have to uh, mark it as a wedge node. So under the mass tools, there's going to be a new option set as a wedge node. And that's that. And let's go to our box. And let's say I want to wedge out some of these uh, boxes values. So let's say my uniform scale is going to be three. And I want to wedge out between the basically this is going to be my middle point. I want to wedge out a couple of sizes for this. So go sides here and add the parameter to wedge. And that's going to be basically all the wedge options that you can set uh, values. So I want to uh, press on bracket. That's going to basically automatically select that wedge type. And let's also, let's rotate. Add to the wedge. And that's going to be a range. So we added the wedges. Let's go to the, our top network. And you can see there's, there's basically parameters pointing to these. And we have to give it some names. Uh, this is basically attribute name and this is going to be box scale so for the brackets you can see it's, it's automatically uh, chose our attribute type which is a float uh, because the uh, parameter type is a float and it's also automatically added the center of it as being a tree because we set it uh, as a wedge at that uh, value 3. So we want to wedge out uh, the offset is going to be 2, something like this. And for the ro uh, for the rotation, let's make it a 360, basically 360 uh, from start to end. Also, let's put it to the random samples. And let's wedge it 10 values. Click it. And now for us actually to see it, if we, we can use either the attribute or we can actually, uh, uh, we should probably better use a uh, uh, override the target parameter, so that this, so, so that this uh, actually basically we we override these parameter values at the we without the uh, referencing the uh, attribute. So let's take a look at it. So you can see we are basically wedging out all of these values ten times. So yeah, that's easy way to add parameters to the wedge. And that's it for this update for tools that you can go ahead and download. And see you next time.